Let's bow our heads now for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful to Thee tonight for the promises that we have in this song. We can just see the epileptic boy in that spasm, his father coming to meet you and asking if you'd have mercy, and he said, I can if ye believe. All things are possible to them that believe. You promised that you would never leave us or forsake us. The Scripture says you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you're just as willing tonight to heal our sickness as you were then, for you are the same, and you promised in your word that the things that you did, we would do also. That's your promise, and we know that it's true. So may all these great promises, Lord, be fulfilled to your children tonight, that each and every one may receive what they have come for. And when the service shall close this evening, and we go to our different homes, may we talk among us like those who came from Emmaus that day. You'd walked with them all day, and they didn't know you. But that night, when you got them alone in the room, you did something just like you did before the crucifixion, something that no one else did it just that way. And they recognized by this that you did that you were the risen Christ. And they said, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us along the way? We pray that you'll return to us tonight, Lord. Just this few people, but you said, If two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in their midst. That's your promise, Lord, and we believe it to be true. We're waiting now in the name of the Lord Jesus for the confirmation of thy word. Amen. You may be seated. How shall you curse the faithless knight and say, Lord, thy God? Yea, as thou hast come to me, we pray that thou hast come before the throne of days to the knight say, the Lord, thy God. Yea, as thou shalt have a new hold upon the Lord, thy God, thou shalt have a new revelation of the eternal of the Lord thy God, yea, even as thou wast about for thyself this night, if thou seest the frail things of the wood and the timber of the natural building of things upon the face of the earth, yea, these things shall pass away, yea, but the word of the Lord thy God shall endure. Thou hast heard the word say, yea, the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, yea, and they blew upon the word of the Lord thy God, yea, but it shall stand, yea, the things upon the sand, yea, the things upon the rocky shore, yea, they shall not stand, but the eternal word, the foundation which thou shalt see, lifted up before thee this night, yea, this is the eternal word of the Lord thy God, and thou shalt be encouraged. Thou shalt see the power of the Holy Spirit, yea, manifest in thy men, yea, for thou hast already taken a step of faith, because thou hast arrived, yea, where they gather together in the mighty and in the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks be to our Heavenly Father for that great encouragement, how it should make us feel before the service begins. He's given us a promise through a spirit of prophecy that we will see him in our midst in the earth. Now, is it so? Certainly it's so. It comes from God. Anything that comes from God is always right. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm so thankful to be living in a time that when the Spirit of God is in the midst of His people, calling out, separating a church to take home for a remnant that will be left on the earth when He comes to be received up into the heavens. So thankful for it. Oh, this is a great hour. I'm so glad to be living here. You know, Moses would have loved to have lived in this time. All the apostles would have liked to have been living in this time. And here we are living in this time and living under our privileges. How that God wants to bless his people. Now, you know, it's told us that the day when the Lord come, it would be kind of uh, unexpected. And the church would be cooling off and... I've just got finished at my tabernacle at home with uh, uh, the seven last church ages. 
And it's coming out. It's on tape now. And it's, I took each church age, each night, made the seven church ages and the seven lights, the candlesticks and the seven messengers out of the church ages. And I, of all, I'm not much of a preacher, but all that I ever effort, I put forth for the Lord in all my life. I don't believe ever was as effective as that was. For as soon as I come down and not knowing what to draw these church ages on a blackboard, showing just how much the Holy Spirit come in the Ephesus church age, then on down to the Smyrnian, Pergus, and Thyatira, and on out. And if that angel of the Lord, that light, didn't come right in before 300 people, moved itself right over on the wall, and draw with that round light, just the way I draw the churches, and showed exactly the same depths and everything as it went through. While 300 people screaming and crying and looking at it on the side of the wall. While it stood out here and reflected itself on the wall and made that same thing, and they've got it drawn now on, uh, on pictures and standing in the tabernacle. Mr. Oregon Bright, our dear precious brother, has just left up there and went up to look at it where it was at on the wall. We're just living in a tremendous time, but I'm afraid that we don't have to pinch ourselves a little bit and shake a little bit to find out just where we're at. I've often said and made this remark, I find two classes of people as I travel the world. That's Pentecostal for one and fundamental for other. Now, the fundamental people positionally know what they are in Christ by the promise of the Bible, but they haven't received the Holy Ghost to know who they are or have faith. Now, the Pentecostal people has received the Holy Ghost, but they don't know who they are. See? So it's just like a man's got money in the bank and don't know how to write a check. The other can write a check and hasn't got no money in the bank. Now, if you could get those two together, if the Pentecostal people could settle themselves... As I said last night, I truly believe this with all my heart. The Pentecostal church was in better condition. I, I wasn't a minister in those days. And I don't think I was probably wasn't on earth in those days. But at the old Azusa Street meetings that you speak so much of, and I've read the books of, the early Pentecostal church 30 or 40 years back was in better condition for the coming of the Lord than they are right now. They really was right down to earth Christians. And they lived it. They believed it. Now, we have classified ourselves, and we've got our organizations, denominations, it stands in class, and we've got grandchildren in. It's been tucked in by adoption and so forth. We don't have the old line of Pentecostals that used to die out and really come through with God, that real genuine faith. They just asked God, they anointed them in oil, and went on and... God healed. Today, God can come down and show himself miraculously right among the people and everything. And they'll say, well, I guess that was very well. You've had too much teaching. Looking for new light. That's what Eve was looking for when she got her eyes put out. See, just go back to the Bible and stay right with the old trend. Don't leave that old pathway. Uh, the first love and the first uh, thing that come to you... Live with the Holy Spirit. Don't get off onto some other tantrum. Stay right with God, right in His Word. And the Holy Spirit will never make you do anything that's contrary to this Word. It'll stay right in the Word. Because the, the Word is God. Last night I was talking on the subject of expectations. Tonight I was going to pray for the sick. Now, in the coming part, next tomorrow night beginning... We want to start on the evangelistic type of message. Maybe the coming of the Lord, the mark of the beast, the seal of God, the 144,000, the four horse riders of revelations. Well, I believe those messages are what we got to get to the people to wake them up, shake them, Amen. to show them that we, I see the great results in the seven church ages. I would go through that again if I thought it would help here. How that the God did bless it. Now, let me warn the people. Again and again, do not expect the last shake of God in the church to be a universal thing. It isn't going to be. It's to the church. Yes. It's the great things that will happen with the people in the little minority. That's the little group that God shakes to get ready to go. Them are gone anyhow. Yes. See, Now, that's scriptural in Bible. Not long ago, a pastor of a certain great city come to me and he said, Well, I'm getting old. He said, I've been here 20 some odd years. And we've had some of the most powerful meetings. Uh, Chicago, Matson Bose. He said, I have long, Brother Branham, and come here and had a prophecy from the Lord. If I'd come here, I would see the mighty hand of God 
shake this place before time to leave. And I said, Brother Joseph, honestly, I said, you are a great theologian and you're a great man of uh, doctor divinity. There's no doubt about that. I couldn't touch it. But I said, but my precious brother, you have some poor spiritual discernment. That's where the church is missing it today is that spiritual discernment to see what God's are doing. And they look way over the top for something here that's going on right here and it'll be past you before you know it. Did not Jesus say about John? Well, the disciples said, Why does the scribe say that Elias must first come? He said, He's already come and they didn't know him. That's it. They never did know Elijah was a prophet, really, but just the church. They wouldn't have treated him, wouldn't have called him bald head and carry on like that. They didn't know it. They didn't know that John was really truly the prophet of God. They thought he's some crazy man out there in the wilderness trying to drown the people in water. But he never did go into the cities and things, he stayed out in the wilderness odd, peculiar. And they thought he was a fanatic the way he dressed. But the church, the called church that was called to see that, they recognized right quick that he was a prophet. They didn't know Jesus was the Son of God until he was dead and buried and rose again. Many of them don't know it yet today. It's true. They never did know. They, the Catholic Church never did accept a St. Patrick. His schools are all in Northern Ireland. He protested the Catholic bishops. And now they make him a saint. While the Catholic Church burned Joan of Arc crying at the state, stake because they said she's a witch. The girl has seen visions. She was a servant of God. About a hundred years later, they recognized that actually she's done dead and buried, so they repented, dug up that priest's body that killed her, threw him in the river. They never know it till it's passed, and the Holy Spirit's given the church its last call now and doing exactly what the Bible said it would do, and the Pentecostal people are groping over the top of it, watching for something. Oh, my, don't do that, please. Listen, if we're expecting Christ to come, do you believe that? Yes. Well, if we do it, let's act like it. How can we expect Christ to come and put $6 million in the building? <laughs> How you get these great big things talked about Christ coming? Well, brother, we ought to be getting, making ready for the rapture, not for a, uh, another 500 years stay here on earth. See? There's something wrong. It just don't jive somehow. It don't, it don't make sense to me. By their fruits, you might say it with your lips, but by your heart, see? You say, oh yeah, I believe Christ is coming, but your action proves different. What if a man told his wife he loved her and then ran off with another woman? See? Action speaks louder than words. That's right. No matter what we say with our lips, our actions prove what really is in our heart. That's what Jesus said. Hypocrites, how can you say good things for out of the abundance of heart speak of the mouth? See? If it isn't, then it's hypocrisy. So you see where God of class is? Just in that lady of sin in church age. Lukewarm, speaking from her lips, but her heart's far away. Oh, God. Let's swing that thing backwards. Let's get down to God. Let's go down to the Scripture and get down there until we really get Pentecost back in the human's heart. Not back in an organization, but back in the heart of the people in the organization. Yeah. That's what we should do. So God help us this week to do it. I'm praying, fasting, waiting on God. I want to do my part while I'm here in California. You do your part. Get out and get the people in. God is doing greater things today than has ever been known since Jesus Christ is on earth. That's right. And it's going right over the top of the people's head. And they're missing seeing it. That's the bad part. If they would have only knew it. Like Jesus said... Said about the, um, the uh, said if you'd only know your day, if you'd only knew it, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oft would I have hovered you as a hen does her brood, but you would not. If you'd only know your day, your visitation, that's the way it is today. It's always been. That's what it is now. If we'd only know the day of visitation, but the visitation goes right through, and the people are looking way over here for something else, and first thing you know, the visitation is over, and there it is. But, as he said, no man can come to me except my Father has drawn him first. All the Father has given me will come to me. Amen. Oh, that's what makes us... Now, we like to talk to people where we can make them feel real good. But the best thing to do if there's, there's something wrong, let's get that out of the way first. Let's get the thing down to the foundation, see. A fellow said to me not long ago, a well-known minister, one of the best in the world, he said, Brother Branham, you're making too much of a mistake. I said, pardon me, my brother. Tell me where it's at. He said, you cut at people too hard. 
said, you, for instance, you, you're always bawling the, the women out from the way they dress. And you're always uh, 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 slamming this and that. He said, you better quit that. You'll ruin your ministry. I said, any time that the Word of God ruins my ministry, God ruin it right quick because I, I want it ruined. Uh, that's right. I want to give something that's right. The Word of God teaches that. And I say, God, give us boldness and man that will stand for the truth regardless of what comes or goes. That's what we need. The gospel's not something for a sissy. gospel's for man. God call man. You never judge a man by how big his hands is and how wide his shoulders is. I remember saying, oh, isn't he a man? I see men that weighed 200 pounds and didn't have an ounce of man in them. That's right. You don't measure a man by his size. That's brute. You measure him by his character. There never was a greater character man than Jesus Christ. A big body, a mule stouter than any man. So you could, or elephant, so you, that'd be brute. But a man's not how big or muscle he's got. I don't measure him by that, but how the bags is and the knees of his trousers where he's been praying. That's the man is to be measured. Character. Jesus was a small man, little fella. Probably stooped shoulder to 30 years old. He looked 50, the Bible said. But there never was a man on earth like him, and never will be. He, he, the Bible said there was no beauty for him, that, that we should desire him. When we seen him, we hid as it was our face from him, and all like that. But yet it pleased God to, to smite him, and he was smitten, stricken, and afflicted. He bore our transgressions, was bruised for our iniquities, and by his stripes we were healed. Oh, it should be attractive to people. It really should. It should stir the heart. But you know what's the matter? We've tuck out the Wednesday night prayer meeting and put in a television program that keeps all the people entertained. And where the heart is, the treasures is there, the heart is also. And what makes people want to go to things of the world? Well, I, you know the reason you do that is the reason people does that? What makes a man want to get drunk? What makes people want to act the way they do? The world. What would a person stay home on Wednesday night from a prayer meeting to watch a certain television program? What would they do that for? It's because there's something in them that desires to be satisfied. There's a little place in a man's heart or a woman's heart, and God made that place for himself. How dare you to try to take the things of the world and put in there where God made for himself to sit there. God is our joy. God is our pleasure. God is our satisfaction. That's where it belongs in here. Let God in. And then the other things are so dead you don't even care nothing about them no more. Yeah. All people are very religious, always been. As I preached the other night over there, a revival always produces twins like Esau and Jacob. Men of the world and the man that desires the birthright. See, always there's every revival produces that. This Latter-day revival has done the same thing. It's true. So let's get on the Jacob side, the one that's Go to inherit the one that's going into the promised land. And we cannot be satisfied just with the going to church and putting our name on the book. If we do this something wrong, let's keep climbing higher and higher until we reach that promised land. Preach another day at the Christian Businessman's Convention in Phoenix, Arizona, there in the ballroom. I said, How little could Israel ever think when they're shouting and dancing in the spirit and marrying with that tambourine after they crossed over the Dead Sea and seen the taskmasters dead behind them. Little did they think they were 40 years away from the promised land. They couldn't believe that. It was only about four days away. But they had to have a, you know, had to go up to Exodus 19 and make their biggest mistake they ever made. Had to go up and get a law so they could fuss and organize and get themselves together. Grace had provided them a prophet. Grace had provided them a lamb. Grace had provided them miracles. Grace had given them the biggest revival they ever had. Grace had provided all these things, and yet they desired a law. That's exactly where our fathers stood in Pentecost about 40 years ago. Grace had provided. There's all in one accord. Every Pentecost was Pentecost. But they couldn't be satisfied that they had to organize them a class called Assemblies of God. And all they had to give them another church of God, four square, oneness, twoness, threeness, fourness, and you've been sitting right there for 40 years. God have mercy. We need a... Well, they stayed there till all them people that kind of mind died out. 
And then one day a Joshua he rolls up, put his arms on him all, and God said, You've been on this mountain long enough, now let's go north and cross over. Yeah. Take the promise. Yeah. God can take Baptists or Methodists or whatever he wants to, but somebody's going over, that's yeah. right. Amen. And as long as we still get our classical ideas and set around that we are, you'll stay right there. It's just exactly. Oh, let's rise. Let's get out of it. My, shake yourselves and realize God's still God. He has to remain. If He ever was God, He's still God. He don't change to our ways. We've got to change our ways to His ways. Well, I didn't even want to say that. I just, I, I'll read some scripture now. All right, St. John twelve twenty. I'm going to just read a verse here. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to the feast to worship. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethesda of Galilee, desiring him, saying, Sirs, we would see Jesus. Now, turn to Hebrews thirteen eight. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. How many believe that solemnly with all your heart? Now, tomorrow night we're going on to the evangelistic services. Tonight we're going to we give it for divine healing. Now, there's one thing to talk about anything, and then there's another thing to make what we've talked about be true. And it's all God's Word, and the only thing it needs is faith to make any divine promise act. That's right. If God made the promise, then God's obligated to His promise. Now, I want you just to give me your undivided time for a few minutes. If you give me about 30 minutes, and then we'll call the prayer line. And in a few minutes, we can go home. Now, the first thing is, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Do you believe that solemnly? Is he the same in principle, the same in power, the, the same power that he once had, the same compassion? If he was sure which he is today, would he act just exactly like he did when he was here before? Or do you think after 2,000 years he's got a little wiser, a little smarter, knows how to make a church different, and he kind of have to apologize on what he did on, on the Pentecostal church first, so he just makes him a different Pentecostal church for the last age. Would that be his idea? Not if he's the same. <laughs> He'd have the same ideas. And he was God, so he can't change. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. So he'd have the same ideas and the same principles, the same power, and the same church. He's the same yesterday and forever. Now, one day there were some people who had never seen him, staggered into the meeting or up to worship at Pentecost. They would heard about him, so they came to one of his servants and said, Sir, we would see Jesus. And by asking this servant, this servant produced Jesus for them. Now, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you got up your hands that you'd like to see him, then why can't we see him? That's the question. Can't we see him? If he is the same, then why can't we see him? You raise your hand like those Greeks. You'd like to see him. I raise my hand. I like to see him. And he promised that he would be with us and never forsake us. I'm with you always. Even to the end of the consummation, he's always here. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Then what's the matter? Why can't we see him? Now, if he will come into our midst tonight. Now, if you're a stranger, you might not understand this, but I want you just to pull the sideboards down and sit still for the, uh, for the rest of the meeting and listen close to these words. Promises I'm going to read to you. Wrote out here in the, on his paper out of the Bible. And I, I want to read you some promises and find out whether he's still alive or not. To see if our Christian religion is the true religion and if our Pentecostal conception of it is true or whether it's wrong. Even, I believe, in, uh, uh, even in all its era, I still choose it to be the church. Now, not because that they're Pentecostal. Pentecost is not an organization. Now, you Baptists and Methodists remember that. Catholics and Presbyterians, you can't organize God. You don't organize God. Pentecost is an experience that Methodists, Baptists, Presbyterian, Catholics, and all receive. Amen. That's right. Now, I've always said, if a man's a Catholic, and he's depending on the Catholic Church for salvation, he's lost. And if he's a Baptist, and depending on the Baptist Church for salvation, he's lost. If he's Pentecostal, and depending on the Pentecostal Church for salvation, he's lost. 
But if he's a Catholic and depending on Jesus Christ, he's saved by faith, his own faith. If he's a Baptist or a Pentecostal and looking to Jesus Christ for salvation, for it's by faith are you saved and that through grace of God. That's right. Your personal faith in Jesus Christ is what saves you. Now, if this is his book, I had an interview not long ago with a Catholic priest. He came to my house to ask about if I'd baptize some girl that when she's a baby or a little girl, about 15 years old, she'd remarried and remarried Catholic, and she, he had to baptize her over. The bishop asked me some questions. And he asked me if I baptized her, and I told her Christian baptism by immersing. And he said the Catholic Church used to do that. I said, when? So he went back and said, in the days of the Bible. I said, then, do you claim that the, uh, the Bible is the Catholic Church wrote the Bible? said, Jesus Christ organized the Catholic Church and placed Peter the head of it and the twelve apostles. And that was the first Catholic Church. I said, then, if it's infallible and changes not, why has there been so many more changes made? Why you got 10,000 women out here you're praying to, dead people? And there's only one mediator, said the Bible, between God and man, and that's the man Christ Jesus. No Marys or nothing else. See? I said, why? He said, well, you see, Mr. Brandon, we're not supposed to argue the word. I said, I'm not arguing the word. I'm just asking you. I said, I've got Hassas to Babylon's. I've got the most ancient histories that I can find. Here's the Nicene Fathers, the Nicene Council, the pre-Nicene Council, and all right here in my study. Show me anywhere there was a Catholic church to 305. Show me where it was. That's right. That's right. He said, you're quoting history. I said, how do I know there's a George Washington here only by history? Show me something different. See? And I said, that's exactly right. God never did organize a church, and there was God's plan to do it. Organizations, mother church is Catholic, and all the rest of them is off of that same organization, according to Revelation 17. It's exactly right. Breaking down fellowship. We're all one. Pentecost is for Methodist, Baptist, Catholic, Presbyterian. Whosoever will, let him come. Drink from the fountains of the waters of life freely. Right. Now, if Jesus is... Now, I ain't talking against these organizations... But when you draw a little fence around, like a little thing I seen one time, a little monkey sitting up the tree and said, look over to the other little monkey said, you know, they tell us, that, uh, tell it us, or they say down there that, um, that uh, they come from us. <laughs> said he couldn't believe that. So would I fence up my tree here so my fellow monk couldn't come over and get a coconut when he wanted? <laughs> would I say that I'm the only monk there is in the, in the trees? Well, I said, if it has, then the monkey race has fallen. <laughs> That's, well, that's about right, too. Yeah, when we try to hedge up something, God don't hedge it up. He breaks the hedges down, tore down the middle wall of petitions, and all in one in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit is for all of us that we all might see the glory of God. In all my meetings, I've never seen him say, well, this fellow's a Presbyterian, so he can't get healed, and this one's Baptist, so he can't get healed. He doesn't heal people that way. It's on the basis of their faith and not their denomination. That's right. Now, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, the Catholic Church would say, sure, we believe that. We believe that in our church. Baptists would say, we believe that in our church. The Catholics say, we believe it in that church. Now, if I was going to base this talk upon Baptist, the church that I come from, or if I was going to base it up on Pentecost, or if I was going to base it up on any one of the organizations of Pentecost, I just might as well stop. That's all. But there's only one thing to do. There's got to be something right and something wrong. It's exactly true. You can't get wrong and right at the same time. We have a bogus dollar because it was made off of a real dollar. Now, what, what is the difference? How would we know then? The Catholic Church say we're the oldest organization. Pentecost said, well, we began back there before the organization. All right, we'll just go on all this. The Baptist said we started from John. He was the first Baptist even before Jesus come on the scene. Well, you'd have all kinds of arguments. But let's take it down and find out. Now, what if we go downtown to look for Jesus, that he's the same? We see a man come along with a robe on like he wore. And, uh, the, and the psychological thought of it, that he had long hair. We have no record of that, that he ever had long hair. We don't know. But um, say that we did, we did see a man, it looked like the artist's picture that painted of Jesus. And he had scars in his hands, scars in his feet, and... And thorn marks and so forth, and it looked like maybe uh, the Hossif's uh, uh, picture of him as a head of 33, or maybe some of the other, like the inspirational, or, or some picture. That still couldn't be Jesus, because I'll tell you why. Because no man will see Jesus on earth in a physical body 
until first he goes to glory because we'll be caught up to meet him in the air. That's right. Because he said in the last days to be false Christ and everything saying, Lo, he's in the desert in the secret chamber. Believe it not. But he's here in the form of the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit was in Christ will do the same things that he did because it's the same life. If you put the life of a, of a grapevine in a cucumber vine, it would bear grapes. If you put the life of a peach tree in a, in a sycamore, it would bear peaches. See, exactly because it's a life that's in it produces. And the life that's in the church of Jesus Christ will bear the works and marks of Jesus Christ. And the church is an individual. God deals with Israel as a nation, but the Gentiles as individuals. Uh, you get it, do you? See, individual nation, a nation will be saved when Israel comes. It'll be just born overnight. When Israel will come to God at one time. But then, when the Gentiles, it's individual. A people he's taken out of the Gentiles for his name's sake, making up his bride. Now, what would we do then tonight if we wanted to find out whose church is in? If I wanted to see if he's in the Pentecostal church, if I wanted to see if he's in the Baptist church, or the Catholic church, the oldest organization, or which one are Luther, and that's next to Catholic, and Wesley comes next, and on down like that. If I go over to look at them churches, what would I look for? A man that would look like him? No, there might be many men look like him, just exactly. What would I look for? Then I look for a man that had a life in him. I look for a church that had a spirit in them, just like his spirit. See? I look to see his works. He said, He that believeth on me, St. John fourteen twelve. He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Is that right? Amen. Then we said, uh, uh, He that believeth in me, uh, the works that I do shall he do also. Now you find in the translation I said, Greater than these shall he do. Shall he. But the, actually the right translation from it is, I've got the emphatic diglot, and it says, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he also, and more than this shall he do. Yeah. Not greater, because he couldn't do no greater. He raised the dead, healed the sick, stopped nature. There's nothing could be greater, but it, not in quality, but in quantity he could yes. be greater. Yes. Because then he, God was in one man, Christ Jesus. In him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, when that pillar of fire come down at Pentecost, you know it's tongues of fire set upon each of them. Before they begin to speak with tongues, it's tongues of fire. That was God separating himself from the pillar of fire into each member of his church. God separating himself so he could be universally all over everywhere at one time. Right now, healing meetings is going in Africa. The lames are walking. The blinds are seeing all around the world. Hallelujah. The universal church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And individuals, man who's living and serving him, God separated himself and placed himself out among. That day you'll know that I'm in the Father and the Father in me, I and you and you and me. See? Hallelujah. See? I will be a little while and the world. Cosmos there, the world order, will see me no more. Yet ye, the church, shall see me, for I, I as a personal pronoun, I'll be with you, even in you, yes. to the end of the world. Yes, hallelujah. That's right. I, I will be with you. See, the universal church of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'll be with you. The works that I do shall you do also. Now, let us think just a minute now what he did then. Let's see what kind of works he did and how he made himself known. Now we take, for instance, he was called the Messiah. And the Messiah means the anointed one, the Christ. He had been promised since the Garden of Eden, back in Genesis. Now, we us go back and find out. We read tonight out of St. John 12. Let's go back to St. John 1. And then we'll find out what he was. And if we can find what he was and what church he belonged to, what organization he went to, then if it's our organization, we can be satisfied with it. And we find out what he was and what he was then and what he did then. He should be the same thing and do the same thing today because he said he would. Would that satisfy the church? Now, let's just go back and find out. Now, I'll quote, and you read. And when you go home, take these chapters as I refer to them here. 
And then when we have, we're going to have a constant healing service, we just keep pounding from Genesis to Revelations to show that this is the truth. Now, you might have your ideas all fixed up, so did the Pharisees, of what the Messiah would do when he come. But he come a little different, yet he come exactly what the Scripture said, the way the Scripture said he would come. Now, let's notice in just a minute. We find out after his birth, he up to 30 years old, his second cousin John was baptizing in the wilderness, and Jesus went out and was baptized, and the heavens was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. And he went into the wilderness and was tempted to 40 days. The devil come back with his ministry. And the first thing he started to do, we find out here in John 1, he started going about healing the sick people. And then there was a man by the name of Andrew who had believed on him. Let's take him just for a moment. Let's take now how he made himself known as the Messiah. Now remember that God always gives signs and wonders. How many believe that? Now, in the Old Testament, now listen close. Just bef- it won't take long if we can get you to see the message. You, there won't be a person in here in a wheelchair. There won't be a sick person in this building in 40 minutes from now if you'll listen and catch it close. Now, let's just prove it. That's what the Bible said. Prove all things. Now, if he made the promise, he's got to keep the promise. And God in the Old Testament, if a prophet prophesied... Or dreamer dreamed a dream. The way they found out whether that was true or not, they went down to Urim Thundum. The pastors and so forth knows about that. The breastplate of Aaron. He had the twelve stones of the birth stones of the patriarchs. It hung on a post in the temple. And when the prophet began to prophesy, or the dreamer tell the dream, no matter how real it sound, if it didn't reflect that conglomeration of lights in there, the supernatural wasn't working, so they refused the message. I don't care how much it, good it sounds, how it fit up with Dr. So-and-so's theology or how it fit up with the, this church or that organization. They condemned it because the supernatural didn't act. Amen. Praise I begin God. to feel religious. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Where a supernatural God is, there's going to be supernatural right. Amen. Amen. Now, this can't keep from it. Right. It's just got to be that Amen. way. That's now, right. notice... Now, when that priesthood ended, Aaronic priesthood, then that Urimathundum was taken away. But God has another Urimathundum, which is His Word, the Bible. Now, if God makes a promise in the Bible, and then if you receive that, the supernatural promise will make a supernatural manifestation because God will vindicate His Word. Absolutely. If it doesn't, then it isn't the Word of God. If it isn't, then if our faith isn't great enough, don't deny it. If God made the promise, say it's so, but I ain't got faith enough to do it, let the other fellow do it. If I have got faith enough to start walking like Enoch did and take an afternoon walk and go home with God, I'll never stand somebody else's way who does have enough faith to do it. I'll say, praise God for that, brother. He walked right on out of the earth. I'm just thankful for that. I, I can't do it, but I'm thankful he did it. I, yes. See, I believe that. And I don't want to stand in anybody's way who has faith to make God's Word be confirmed. Now, it's got to come from the Word. Now, when Jesus came, He came to His own, the Jews. Now, we find out He had a Messiah sign that followed Him. John bare record of it, and it looked like a a dove, a light, coming down from heaven. He noticed it. Now, when that light or dove came into the Son of Man, we notice what taking place. Andrew, let's start off with him. We uh, St. John 1, the first chapter, amen. We find out that Andrew, as soon as he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, he goes to get Simon Peter. His name is Simon, man. And he said to Simon, now, you must come see. Let's break in on their conversation. They're both fishermen. I can see Simon, perhaps the older of the two, sat down on the side of the boat and say, Andrew, now, you know that we're both Pharisees. Because we're after our old father, the Pharisee. And I remember, Andrew, before father died, when I was yet a young boy, one day after we'd fished out on the lake all day long, we'd come in, and father had prayed hard that he'd get fish. And right at the last hour, we caught fish for our bread the next day. Oh, I can see our our mother's always on her knees praying how we trusted God to help us. Oh, certainly, Brother Simon, I remember that very well. Well... I remember, Simon, my father said to me one day as he stroked my hair back and I put my hands up on his gray hairs, and he said, 
Simon, my son, I've always wanted to live to see the day when our deliverer, Messiah, would come. But I'm getting old now, so I suppose I won't be able to see him, Simon. But you're a young lad. No doubt you'll see him in your day. Now, there's going to be a lot of confusion. Always is, Simon. Just before this supernatural take place, there'll be a lot of false things take place. But I want you to remember this, Simon, that when Messiah comes, the Messiah will have the sign of the Messiah. And you'll know him by the sign. Moses said so. For Moses said, the, and over in the chapter of, uh, of Deuteronomy, we find this. That he said that the Lord, Deuteronomy 18.15, if you want to put it down to read it, read the rest of the chapter down. That the Lord your God shall raise up a prophet liken unto me. It'll come to pass that who will not ever hear this prophet will be cut off from amongst the people. See? Now... He said, now remember, Simon, there may be great forceful speakers raised up. There may be great man will raise up. But remember, as Jews, we know that God is sending to us a prophet, a Messiah prophet. And the reason now we've had 400 years now since Malachi, we haven't had any prophets. But when the Messiah comes, he will be a God prophet. Hallelujah. We'll know him by that. Now, don't forget that, Simon. Now, he says, Andrew, you might say this is a great man. He can hold the people spellbound. But to me, he has to be a prophet because of Messiah. And I heard you talk about that man in the wilderness and so forth. John, he perhaps was a prophet too. I don't know. But this Messiah will be a God prophet. He'll be a prophet plus. He'll be more than a prophet. He'll be a prophet plus. I'll go with you someday. I can imagine seeing Andrew then go on to the service to hear Jesus of Nazareth. And they come home and told him some things that happened. So the next day, maybe Simon decided he would go. And you remember, he was given the keys. Simon was later on. He was an ignorant man. He didn't come out of any of the seminaries, any of the Bible schools. Uh, he couldn't even sign his own name, Simon Peter. The Bible said he was both ignorant and unlearned. But they take a notice that he had been with Jesus. Now, that's the main thing. That's true Pentecost. Thing. Now, we find out that he went down and perhaps walked up with Andrew and a great crowd of people around. And as soon as he got into the sight of the Lord Jesus, wondering if he was a Messiah. Now, we're going to find out what Messiah was. And as soon as he got into the presence of the Messiah, he looked at him and he said, Your name is Simon. And you are the son of Jonas. Oh, my. That was enough for him. Not only did he know who he was, he knew that godly old father had told him what he would be. That settled it forever. That was the Messiah. Yes, sir. If that was Messiah yesterday, making himself known to his own, that's Messiah today, making himself known to his own. Remember, to his own. We're going to get to that in a minute. Now, what was it? There was many standing there, perhaps, didn't understand that. But Simon knew it, for he was looking for that type of a person. He was led of the Spirit. He knew by the Scripture that that was exactly Messiah. He not only knowed him, but he knowed his father, and he called both their names. And there stood a man there by the name of Philip. And Philip said, Say, that's it. I know that's Messiah. And around the hill he went 15 miles around the hill to find a friend to tell him about it. There's something or another. When you really get a vision of Christ, you can't keep still. You've got to tell somebody about it. Yes, amen. Just a touch of him and it sets your soul aflame. I've got to find. I've got a friend by the name of Nathaniel. He's a great man. He's a good scholar. And around the mountain he went. Probably it's getting evening time when he got in. He knocks at the door. And Mrs. Nathaniel comes to the door. Well, if it isn't our friend Philip. Oh, where is Nathaniel? He's taking a stroll out in the orchard. Away he went. Out in the orchard. And he found out there under the fig tree. He found Nathaniel down on his knees. Perhaps saying, Oh, Lord God, you promised us deliverance. We're looking for it. We've been waiting for it. 
When will you do it, O oh Lord God? I'm waiting for that promise that you give. Gets up and dusts his, his uh, clothes off like that. And he turned around and who was standing there but Philip? He said, no doubt, Philip, my friend. And before he said anything, how are you getting along? Is the trees all right? He had an urgent message, something real. He said, come see who we found. Yes. Oh, Praise God. Watch right straight Hallelujah. to the mark. Come see who we found. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. He's the Messiah. I know he is the Messiah. Oh, now I can imagine Nathaniel saying, Now, Philip, now I know the many Bible lessons that we've had, the many good schoolings that we've had together, and we know, you and I know. Now, what's happened, Philip? Have you went off on the deep end somewhere? Well, what's happened to you, Philip? Now, don't you come tell me that, that this Messiah could ever come out of Nazareth. Now, we know we heard Cephas' last talk that someday the Messiah would come and he'd probably land like an airplane, you know, right out on the campuses of the temple. He would come to our organization because it's the greatest series in the country. And uh, he would come right... And if he doesn't come to ours, we won't believe it. We'll have nothing to do with it. We'll cooperate with the rest of them. No. It's got, he'll come to us. We're the ones. And he'll come out there and he'll come up to Caiaphas, the high priest, our bishop, and say, I am the Messiah. I've come now to take over. Sure, that's the way it'll happen. <laughs> that idea has never left the people. <laughs> that's right. But you know what? God does things the way he wants to do it. He usually does it contrary to the way we're all fixed up to receive it. So he can... He can well, he has hid himself from the eyes of the wise and prudent. And reveal himself to babes such would humble and learn of him. Now, quickly, watch what happened. But I can hear Philip go to him with something that was positive. Not some words he had said, but something that he had done. Now I can hear him say, Nathaniel, you are a scholar of the scripture. Yes, sir. What kind of a man will the Messiah be? Why, the Messiah will be a prophet. Yes, sir, that is true. Because Moses told us our leader... He was uh, his words we've depended on and should depend on it until there came a prophet and he would be the Messiah and would show the sign of the Messiah. Yes. Well, this Jesus of Nazareth I'm talking about, you remember that old fisherman down there uh, they called Simon you bought the fish from that time and he couldn't even sign the receipt for it? Oh, yes, I know him and I know his father. Well, well, the other day his brother brought him up into the audience where Jesus was standing. He looked around and said, Your name is Simon. You're the son of Jonas. You know him both. And he did that? Yes. Who told him about it? Nobody. Simon just was brought up by Andrew, his brother. Come up there. You know, it wouldn't surprise me, but why did he tell you who you are when you get there? Well, I don't know about that now. I've got to see. You know, I've been orthodox a long time, so I, I'll have to see about this. And the first thing you know, the next day when they come up, well, they might have come in the prayer line. Or they might have come in the audience. I don't know. Uh, anyhow, as soon as Jesus saw him the first time, Jesus looked right around and said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no God. That took the starch out of him. <laughs> he said, now maybe some of them stood by and say, Well, today they'd say, well, sure, he didn't know he was that because the way he was dressed. He was an Israelite. No, no, all the Easterners dressed alike. He could have been an Arab. He could have been a Greek. Sure, they all dark, wore, gla- wore beard and turbans and garments the same. He, he said, behold, an Israelite in whom there is no God. Oh, it just got him so bad. He said, Rabbi, when did you ever see me? He said, before Philip called you when you were under the tree. I saw you. <laughs> Listen at him. Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. Yes, amen. See, making himself known to his own. Now there was those stood by who called themselves his own. One of them stood by him. And he said, you know what? I've got to give him an answer for our churches. <laughs> he didn't come to our organization. So what will we tell the church about it? When they, we got that. We got to say something. Because something's being done. So we, what will we tell our church? One of them said, I'll tell you. And the little ministerial council over in the corner said, it's of the devil. That's exactly. But they couldn't hide it from him. He turned, perceiving their thoughts. He said, you say that against me, the Son of Man, I'll forgive you for it. But now, to break this word down, but someday the Holy Ghost will come, do the same thing. 
One word against it will never be forgiven. In this world, neither in the world that is to come. The unpardonable sin, the call, the Spirit of God that's doing the Messiah works as he was doing, an unclean spirit. Like a fortune teller. He said he's Beelzebub, a fortune teller. He's reading their minds. He's, he's got a telepathy, a mental telepathy. And he can read their minds. That's what he's doing. They couldn't say he wasn't doing it because right there it was before the people. But look at these men who were ordained to life. Oh, God. Their name's immortal today. They're in glory with Christ. They recognized it to be the Messiah. He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. The King of Israel. He said, Because I told you that you believe, then come go along with me. You'll see greater than this. Mm -hmm. But because he believed. Now, if that was the sign of the Messiah yesterday, and he's the same Messiah today, it'll have to be the same thing that is. It was yesterday. That's how he makes himself known to his church. Now, there's only three races of people on the earth. That's Ham, Sham, and Japheth's people. And that day which is considered Jew, Gentile, and Samaritan. Now, the Gentiles, we Anglo-Saxon, we were heathens in them days. We worshipped idols, Romans and so forth, with clubs on our backs. And we wasn't looking for no Messiah. And remember, Messiah only comes and makes himself manifest to those who are looking for him. The reason we don't see these things today, we're not looking for them. We're looking at our churches, our denominations, our great structures, how much we're growing. Get your eyes off of that. Yes. Look to the Messiah. Oh, yes. Amen. We're at the end time. Now, notice what's taking place. Then we find out that he came now. This, he made, that's how he made himself known to the Jews. Now, we're going to take, turn over a couple of pages to St. John, the fourth chapter. He was going to Jericho. If anybody's ever been in Palestine, it's down below Jerusalem. That's where he's on his road. But he had need go by Samaria up on the mountain. Wonder why. Now in St. John 5, 19, 5, 19, you'll read this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing. See, he's a prophet. The prophet part of him. Now he's more than a prophet. Don't think I'm lying him a prophet. I do not. I heard Sister Florence singing a while ago. I like for some night down here to sing Down From His Glory. I love that song. Yes. It expresses the supreme deity of Jesus Christ. In the days when they tried to make him just a prophet, he was a God prophet. Yes, hallelujah. He's more than a prophet. He was God yes. made manifest. But his son of Messiah was a prophet. Now, we find out that when we see him there... Standing there, then goes up to Samaria. Now, the Samaritans was also half Jew and Gentile that worshiped God. Now, we find out that he went up there, and it's about 11 or 12 o'clock. He sent his disciples away to buy some victuals, food. Went out into Samaria, and he sat down at the well, probably a panoramic, something like this beautiful picture back here. Sitting out there at the well. If he's ever at Samaria, notice a public city well there, still there. And it's about 11 o'clock today. There was a woman come out to get some water. Let's think she was beautiful. Like uh, some of the ladies of the day only uh, is a little different. Then we find out that she... <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about her go to have, make her have long hair. <laughs> I was thinking about that woman that washed Jesus' feet, you know, with her tears and wiped them with her hair. <laughs> She'd have a hard time. She'd have to stand on her head today to get enough hair down there to wipe her feet with. <laughs> They've cut it all off. The Bible says it's her glory, so she just cut her glory away. I don't know why. Maybe she looked at somebody up here she thought more about Hollywood. But however, you, you'll call me a fanatic. You'll call me a crank if you want to. But at the day of the judgment, you'll find out it's thus saith the Lord. Yeah. Right. No wonder we got a church that's dying. Not dying, but dead. That's right. The Spirit of God is grieved and gone from it. Our ways has grieved Him away. Our differences and indifferences towards Him is what's done it. I don't want to hurt you. I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to awaken you. Yes, amen. God have mercy. Yes. Give us strength and courage. Praise Stay on God's Word. Bring it regardless of what it means, what it says. 
would take ministers to get money in to compromise or run big television outfits and things like that, compromise with the people. Not me. I'd rather lay on my stomach and drink branch water and eat soda crackers and preach the truth than have to stand there before the church of the day of judgment and condemn with them. My kingdom is not of this world. My treasures is not in this world. My treasures is in heaven. And my interest is God's people, His church. Yes, amen. Don't pattern yourself after some pastor's wife or some minister's wife or evangelist's wife. Pattern yourself after the Bible. Yeah. Right. Today we got a match. A woman can wear a certain dress to church or get a certain hairdo and every woman wants to wear the same thing. Does the same amongst both sex. I don't care whether my coat matches my trousers or my tie matches my shirt. I want my experience to match God's Bible. That's what kind of a match we need today. A revival of that kind of match. For the Spirit of Jesus Christ living among us. That's right. They can't mix together like they do up here in Los Angeles and around here. They can't mix together. You can't tell one from the other now. They all look alike. Them days it was different. If a woman is bad, she is marked bad. She stayed in her own company. She didn't associate with the rest of them. Now it's just like taking a, an egg, you go picking with the middle of it, it just gets the whole thing yellow. See? So that's what it is. Now look, I was reading here for a proverb, proverbs rather, over the nation in Los Angeles, how it is, oh, it's terrible. Your increase is about 30% over last year. What a, what's a Sodom? Oh, May God shake the people here. Since a revival somewhere that will shake the Pentecostal church back to its senses again. Spitting fire for the audiences that the people might understand this hour that we're living. Setting asleep as, of course, the Bible said they'd do it, I guess. Well, there you are. Now, this woman comes out and she... uh, Maybe she'd come out that time. Maybe she'd been out all night and slept till that time. Uh, but anyhow, she'd come out with a pitcher. she put the little strings under the little hooks and let the window down to get the water. And when she about got her water drawn up, she heard somebody say, Woman, bring me a drink. Now remember, she's a Samaritan. Now he showed this sign of Messiah to the Jews. Now here's the Samaritans. Woman, bring me a drink. She said, looked over and she said, Well, no, I'll make it break it down. We have segregation here. It's not customary for you being a Jew. Ask me a woman of Samaria such a thing. And um, she said, uh, he's probably sitting there. He, he wasn't 30 something years old, but the scripture said, St. John 6, that he looked 50. He said, You're not a man 50 years old, and you say you've seen Abraham. He said, Before Abraham was, I am. That's right. See? Probably his work broke him down. Might have been grayed up a bit or something while he was sitting there. And she is looking at him. Man looking about 50 years old, sitting up against the side of that wall. He said, it's not customary for you Jews to ask us Samaritans. He said, but if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. What was he doing? Now, you have to take my word for this. He's trying to contact her spirit. God had sent him down there. God sent me to this church. I don't know you. See, I don't know none of you. But God had sent him up there. He had need to go by Samaria. Why? They were looking for a Messiah. He had to go up and show him, and he was Messiah. So he sat there. This woman said, uh, uh, talked to him, said, uh, for a dress of the well is deep and you have nothing to draw with. He said, our fathers worshiped this mountain and so forth and you say at Jerusalem. And the conversation went on. What was he trying to do? Find where her trouble was. Now listen close now. Find where her trouble was. Now what is it? The Messiah is going to make himself known to his own in Samaria. See? To the Samaritans. How he done it to the Jews? He has to do the same thing to the Samaritans. Sure. He has to call his own, but the same. Remember what I said last night? If God ever makes a decision to do a thing a certain way, he has to do it every time the same way. If he didn't, he made a mistake when he done it the first time. See? You don't give one a piece of cornbread and a piece of cake. It's all the same. Just exactly. See? Now, notice he's, he's infinite, perfect, omnipotent, omnipresent. Now, we see him there at this Samaritan. Now, how is he going to make himself known to Samaritan? The question is between him and the woman. And after he looked at her a few minutes, the father had sent him up there. So he, he said, uh, uh, go get your husband and come here. She said, I don't have any husband. Oh, well, he said, that's right. You've had five. And the one you're living with now is not your husband. So you said, well, I can see that pretty big bunch of 
curly hair dropped down over her shoulders and her big brown eyes and the tears rolled down her cheeks. She said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. How much different from that prostitute and them preachers. She know more about God than half of them. A great deal that way today, too. That's right. Yeah. She said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. She said, we know, we, mis- we Samaritans, we know that when the Messiah comes, that'll be the sign that he'll do. So you must be his prophet. We know when Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. But who are you? Oh, my. And there was but one could ever say this. He said, I'm he yes. who speaks with you. She recognized it. That was the Messiah that she had been taught that was coming. She knowed he would be a prophet, a God prophet. So she said she dropped her water pot or set it down. And she ran into the city and watched her message. She ran in and said, come see a man who's told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the very sign of the Messiah? Isn't this the very Messiah? Don't our scriptures tell us that when he comes, that's what he'll do? And the Bible said that the man of that city believed him to be the Messiah because of the testimony of the woman that he had told her the things that she had done. Yes, yes. Amen. Is that Scripture? Yes. St. John 4. Now, I see my time's getting away, so I'm going to have to hurry now and have the prayer line. I don't want to keep you too long. See? But this will be the last healing service, as far as I know now, until Sunday night. But now, wait, let me get one more little, little hammer here to... Cut this nail in here to make it stick. Now there was the Jews. How did he make himself known to the Jews as Messiah? By showing that he was a God prophet. Is that right? All of you agree on that? Yeah. Now remember, his own. His own. The other Jews, just the regular Jews, them classical ministers and clergymen standing around there with a DDD, PhD, LLD. <laughs> standing there, you know, with their collars turned around, so to say, and the turbans on and all like that. They said it's, it's mental telepathy. Don't see. Look at his class. Look where he come from. What is he to begin with? What school did he come from? Where did he learn this? We have no record of him even attending our seminary, so you know it can't be right. <laughs> he don't belong to the assemblies. <laughs> he don't belong to the oneness. <laughs> he don't belong to the Church of God, the Baptist, Presbyterian, or Catholic. <laughs> we have no record of him being in our schools. I know I'm hurting, but... My mama used to tell me when we was little kids, we, you, we lived this, the poor, back there in the mountains. We had to take cornbread, you know, and get the grease out of bacon rinds we'd get and make the cornmeal. And every Saturday night we'd have to take a, a bath and a dose of castor oil so we'd get ready for Sunday morning go back to school. It, it's so bad, our, our food. We'd get plaguery and everything, turnip greens and black-eyed peas and cornbread and sorghum molasses. That's about what we was raised on. So we'd have to take that cash or mama used to, I'd start to take it. I'd say, oh, mama, please, please. It makes me so sick. And she'd say, if it doesn't make you sick, it doesn't do you any good. So maybe this will stir up your spiritual gastronomics somewhere. That'll make you right good and sick. That'll make people search the scriptures for they're the truth. They're the word of God. They're the infallible ones. They're the ones that testify as a Messiah. Amen. He stands by his word. Amen. I'm not amen in myself, but amen means so be it. <laughs> I, I believe it with all my heart. Amen. The heavens and earth will pass away, but that word will never pass. Amen. Notice this Samaritan woman, the Samaritan had to realize that he was the Christ. Now, what about the Gentiles, Brother Bram? You're leaving them out. Not one place in the scripture where he ever done that sign before a Gentile. Find it and show it to me. It's not there. No, sir. It isn't there. He showed his Messiah sign to those who were looking for a Messiah. Oh, please get this straight. That's the same thing he's doing today. Now, I'll show you why. Now, notice. Before he left, though, he prophesied of the Gentile age. Now, the Jews, they had had 4,000 years to believe on a Messiah. And the Samaritans, from way back at the time of Moses, when they married these uh, Mobanite women and so forth and broke up and become half-breeds and so forth. Now, they had all, had all these years looking for a Messiah and there was some true in heart in there. Now watch. His own. You say it with me. His own. He made himself 
known to his own. Now watch. Many of the Jews didn't believe him. This cause of his Jews, that wasn't enough. But the one that had had their name on the book of life since the foundation of the world. You remember, the Bible said that all the Antichrist in the last days, which was the religious organizations. I'm going to get to that this week, the Lord willing, or next week. See, All right, prove it's the Antichrist. The Bible says so. That's right. And he deceived all that dwelt upon the earth, whose names were not written in the Lamb's book of life, slain from the foundation of the world. That's what it was. See? Now, damn it, all the Father hath passed his given me will come to me. My sheep know my voice. Not because of a breed or a race, but my sheep know my voice. Now watch. Now you say that's Calvinistic. I'm not a Calvinistic. Now, I believe that security goes with the church. Exactly right. But if you're in the church, you're secured with it. But are you in the church? The next thing. <laughs> uh, that's it. Not because you say you are. That don't put you there. Now, but notice, brother. Leaving that subject, we go back to the Samaritan woman. Now watch what he said there. Now... She said, why, certainly, we know that's the Messiah. He'll do that sign when he comes. Now, before Jesus left, in the book of St. Luke, he said, As it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Did you ever hear that? Amen. Now, let's, he said first about Noah's time. We said Noah's eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. But in Sodom, now let's watch. Now, there's always three classes of people. Watch them close. Now, Sodom exactly represented the three classes of people as was Noah's time when the world was de de destroyed by water. Now, in Sodom, it was destroyed by fire. Is that right? Amen. Now, notice, there were three classes of people and three messengers. Now, Abraham represented his own. Say it again. His own. Abraham and his group was out of Sodom, and the very word church means called out, separated. Lot took his choice with his organizations and went down there and become the mayor of the city, and his wife belonged to all the society and put on a Hollywood style and so forth. See what happened to her? She still stands there as a pillar of salt. Now, but there she desired to be Hollywood, you see. She wanted to be like the rest of the world. But Sarah was the most beautiful woman in all the world, and she took her choice with her husband and lived out there on the poor of the land so she could serve God and be heir of the promise. What a difference. Now, when things is going hard, not great big fine things, but going hard. One day Abraham was sitting in the shade of the oak and he looked out there, it must have been long about noontime, and he seen three men coming, dust all over their clothes. Now hold that two scriptures now. Now I seen him dust all of their clothes and he walked up and Abraham being spiritual and waiting to see that promise. Quickly he was the called out. He recognized it. There was something strange about that man. Oh, of course, they might have said, how do you do, sir? We're strangers. We've come from a foreign land. He went to meet him, said, come over and sit down on the tree. I'd like to talk with you just a minute. Uh, let me fetch a little water and wash your feet and give you a morsel of bread. And then you go on your way. Sit down. That's why you come by this way. God sent you this way so I could, I could do this for you. Well, they said, go, oh, so be it. And went and sat down. And I could see him going and say, Sarah, way back in the tent, said, need a little flour. Get the sifter and sift her out a little meal here or something. And make some cakes on the hearth. And went out and found a little fat calf and killed it and gave it to the servant. Said, dress it. And he fixed it all up and brought it out before him. Sat down. I watch. As it was in Sodom, it's going to be this way because this is a burning time. You believe that? You better believe it when hydrogen and atomic bombs and Sputniks and everything else flying around you. You better be believing it because it's coming. Notice. Now, what taken place? Here's what took place. The angels sat there a little bit, three of them. They kept looking over towards Sodom. After a while, now we remember, two of them went down to Sodom. How many knows that? Amen. Two of them went down to Sodom and they preached. Oh, a, a modern Billy Graham. See? Went down to Sodom. Because there was Lot was down there, which represented the lukewarm believer, the borderline believer, the denominational brother. He was down there in Sodom with the rest of the world. His congregation is all worldly and everything else. But he was down there. 
And they sent a modern Billy Graham down and preached to them. No miracles. Only smote them blind. And preaching of the gospel does smite the unbeliever blind. We know that. Not, not, not Lot was smitten blind, but smitten blind rather. But the others were smitten blind. Now, but now we see what kind of sign they done. Preach the gospel in such a way that blinded the real unbeliever and called Lot out before the fire fell. Is that right? Amen. Watch this fellow stay behind what sign he gave the church. His own. The one who stayed behind was not an angel. It was God. Amen. The Bible said it was God. Abraham called him Elohim, the self-existing one. Capital L-O-R-D. He ought to know he is the one talking to him. God, a minister said to me one time, I said, said, you mean that was Jehovah God? I said, that was Jehovah God. Oh, I said, you just fail to find out how great he is. What are we made out of? Sixteen elements. Calcium, potash, petroleum, cosmic light. He just got a handful of them. Come here, Gabriel. Step in this. See? Blow one over here for another angel. Blow one for himself. Come right down, eat the flesh of a calf, drink the milk from the cow, eat the cornbread, and disappeared right before Abraham. <laughs> See? Well, that's the God that owns us. I might not be a spoonful of ashes, or neither will you, but he can speak. Hallelujah. I'll come forth. He'll call me. I'm glad that he knows me, and I'm glad that I know him. He's Jehovah. There he was. What was he representing? What he would be in the last days dwelling in flesh. Now watch close. Now we find out that is. Let's see what kind of a sign he gave to his own. The same as he did when he come on the earth. God made flesh in Christ. Now notice he had his back turned and he said, "Abraham, how do you know he was Abraham? Where is your wife Sarah? What? Know his name was Abraham. Know that he was married and had a wife, and her name was Sarah." Abraham was astonished. He said, uh, and the Bible specifically says, Abraham said, she's in the tent behind you. Women didn't act then like they do now. Run out and have to take their husband's place and tend to all the business and vote in politics and put guys in like they just put in and things like that. No, they didn't do it then. No, they know more about God. Sarah called Abraham her Lord. Now, said, she's in the tent behind you. In the tent behind you. He said, Abraham, listen, I. Oh, mercy. I, that personal pronoun again. I'm going to visit you according to the time of life. As I made you that promise in the beginning. Twenty-five years ago. Here was a man eating cornbread, eating calf's flesh, and drinking milk from a cow with some butter on the bread, no doubt. Sitting there eating that and saying, I made you the promise and I'm going to do it. Amen. And Abraham called him Elohim, the Almighty God. There was sitting there saying, I'm going to visit you according. And Sarah, back in the tent, went, laughed, said, Me, an old woman here, a hundred years old, and have pleasure with my Lord again like that? Or it couldn't be. And the, the man sitting there said, Why did Sarah laugh? Oh, what kind of a telepathy is that? <laughs> what kind of a woman in the tent behind him? said, why did she laugh? Now watch, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. That God would manifest Himself in human flesh, His church. The body of Christ. And would do the same sign. There the Gentile gets it. Now, sirs, we would see Jesus. Is he the same yesterday and forever? Amen. See, I made himself known to the Jews. I made himself known to the Gentiles and uh, to the Samaritans and promised it to the Gentiles. Now, we've had 2,000 years. It's never been in the church, but it shall be light in the evening time. The prophet said there will be a day that it won't be neither called night or day, but in the evening it shall be light. Now, listen. I mean, one day this week, the Lord willing, I'll preach on when the east and the west meets. Now, every person that's got any education knows that civilization has traveled with the sun from the east to the west. How many knows that? <clears throat> Certainly you know it. Civilization, the oldest we have is China. And we come right around the civilization has traveled with the sun. Now, in the eastern people, on the eastern horizon, the 
S-U-N rises and sets in the West, on the Western people, S-U-N. And the S-O-N of God, the same as the S-U-N of God, the S-O-N of God came to the Eastern people first, the Jews and so Is that right? Greeks and so forth. Come to the East. Now, there's been 2,000 years that's been dismal. They've made organizations and built hospitals and they built churches. Just what Jesus told them not to do. He never said build churches. He never said build organizations. He said preach the gospel. That's right. Manifest the power of God. But these things just took their place. They've lived their day. But now in the evening time, he said it shall be light. And the same sun that shone on the east shines on the west. The same Messiah signs that was done there to prove us Messiah shines on the west. And we're on the west coast. We are 500 yards almost from the sea. And if we go that way, where are we going? Back to China again. The east and the west has come together. That's the reason sin is bottling up here on this west coast. Terrible and wicked. While we used to send to France to get patterns, France sends to us to get fashions from the women. Our Pentecostal women. Shame on you! You Pentecostal man smoking cigarettes and carrying on and marrying three or four wives and deacons in the churches. Shame on you! God be merciful to your sinful soul. And you organizations of, of Methodists and Baptists and assemblies of God and churches of God that permits that... You say you're always picking on the women. Any man that'll let his wife wear shorts and smoke cigarettes, it shows what he's made out of. He ain't a man. Boy, you say you're you're cruel, Brother Brown. I'm not. I'm not cruel. I'm preaching God's word. That's exactly right. Shame on you. Shake yourselves and come to yourself. Come back to God. It shall be light in the evening time. Sirs, we would see Jesus. Did he pull punches? Did any prophet ever pull a punch? He sealed his testimony with his blood. True man of God will never pull punches for a television program somewhere or get money in or some great big educational program. He'll speak the truth. If it takes life, he'll tell the truth. Right. They might hate you one day, but another day coming when they'll love you. Because you're telling the truth. God's Word says it's the truth. There's no scripture in the Bible for the behavior of the Pentecostal church today. Not a bit. It's contrary to it. Let alone you Baptists and Methodists. I know that's strong. But that's what I want it to be. So that you will straighten out. And someday you'll meet down at the judgment bar. Brother, it's the Word of God. Your pastors and so forth got weaker than dishwater. It's the church is a meal ticket instead of the pulpit. Right. We need men of God who will stand and tell the truth. Yes. God is who it hurts. Amen. It takes deacons, trustees, and everything else out. Yes. Be honest. Stand for God and believe His Word. And Amen. God will confirm that Word. Yes. It's zero once, it'll zero again. But you got a zero with it. You can't hold the gun barrel this way and expect to hit that way. You won't do it. Hold it to the left and to the right. won't do that. It'll shoot a straight line. We got to get in this scripture and shoot it straight. Amen. Amen. Sirs, we would see Jesus. The Bible said he's the same yesterday and forever. Give us 15 minutes, will you? The Holy Spirit in the church here. Now if I hurt. For, no, don't forgive me. Mm-mm. Don't do it. Just go home and think of it a while. I didn't, don't mean. I have to say things sometimes. It cuts like knives. But, but brother, I, I'm responsible. I'm responsible before God to tell what's truth. Then if I've told the truth, God will vindicate it to be the truth. Now let's see if I told the truth or not. Let's ask Father to come on the scene. Let's ask God to come and back up what, if that's the truth. If it is the truth, He won't back it up. If it is the truth, He will back it up. And you people that would like to see Him, if He'll come and do the very same thing tonight in this church, no matter how much He anoints me, He's got to anoint you too. Jesus went into his own country and many mighty works he could not do because of her unbelief. But when he got somebody believing him, a woman touched the hem of his garment and was made perfectly whole. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Would you like to see Jesus? Yes. Now, if 
no matter what he'd be dressed like, what he would look like, if this life is in him, and the man or the people, it'll do the same things he did because he promised it. Is that the sign of the Messiah now to the last days? How many understands it? Well, raise up your hand and say, I understand it. I believe it. Let us pray. Merciful Father. Oh, why do I have to say those things like that? I, I, people who feed my children, the, the people who puts clothes on my back and <laughs> pays my way across the country. And yet, God, let them understand that I'm only trying to shake them. Lord, I'm trying to bring the church back to the old path again. Let them understand. May the Holy Spirit let them know it's not in cruelty. It's not in, to be indifferent, but it's to be truthful, Lord, and to tell the truth regardless. Now, Father, will you back your truth up for us tonight? I'll give them a strong statement that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let the Holy Spirit come tonight, Father, and anoint this little bunch of people here. And let them know that these people, I'm saying these things, but it's being taped here. This tape will go all over the world. It'll be translated in many, many different languages around the world. And people from everywhere will be hearing it. And I must weigh my words, Lord, that they are true and your words and not mine. I'm only quoting you, confessing, as the Bible says that you are now a high priest of our confession. I'm confessing your word that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Speak, Lord God, and let the people know that, that you gave the message, not your servant. Grant it, Lord. We commit it all to you now. I can say no more. And one word from you will be more than any preacher could preach in a million years. Just one word. We know it's there. We know it's the truth. And now we want you to confirm the word with signs following, as you promised, that they might know that I've told them the truth, that you are the Messiah. This great pillar of fire that they got the picture of here, and from Germany, from Switzerland, from all over the country where they've taken it, that it's the same pillar of fire that went with the children of Israel. When he came here on earth, we find out in that pillar of fire dwelt in a body the Son of God. We watch the works that he done. He said, I come from God and I go back to God. Later, after his death, burial, and resurrection, he returned back to the Father. And one day Saul of Tarsus is on his way down to Damascus to rest the people. And that same big pillar of fire struck him down. A light that put his eyes out. Made him blind for a season. And he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He didn't know what that pillar of fire was. He said, who are you? It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. Who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus. Now, Lord, the scientific world knows, as they've tucked the picture, that it's the same pillar of fire. It's a mysterious light that don't only is a phenomena, but it's been struck in the lens of the cameras through the nations. Now, if it is the same spirit, then it'll do the same work. If the people can get themselves in the same condition. Let it be tonight, Lord, that I and this church and these brethren, that you might prove yourself to be Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. When we leave tonight, we'll, like those from Emmaus, we want to see you do now the things that you did before your crucifixion and your promises that you would do it. And after 2,000 years, may you manifest yourself tonight. And when we go home, we'll say, Did not our hearts burn within us as he made himself known among us tonight? And, Lord, I believe it will make the people come back to prayer and fasting. And, and this little church will grow and the power of God will be in it. And prophecies and great signs and wonders and women and men straightening up and walking before God softly. And, oh, what a fear of God will come over the country, Lord. Give them great signs and wonders. Grant it. Strengthen your church, Lord. Oh, God, call your people. Pull them out of this chaos in the last days. Granted, we'll wait for you, Father, to speak to us in the prayer line as we call in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if you'll just bear with us just a few when did you ever see it fail? It don't fail because it's God. It can't fail. God has set that. It's just as real to me as it is to you to take a drink of water. See? I'm just as confident that God will move on the scene as I am standing in this platform tonight because it's His promise. And if he'll do that, then that will show that he is the same Messiah coming back. Now, who to? Not to the outside, the big organizations and things, but to the elect. Yes, See? To the church. Ooh, See what I mean? His own. They say, why don't you have a great big television program? He sent to his own. The elected, the called out. 
Not the flower. Jesus didn't have showmanship. He wasn't a showman. He, he, they said, why don't you get away from that bunch down there on the river you're fooling with just a bunch of holy rollers like, you know, come up here and show campers is what you can do. He never done it. He was kept humbly, quietly. He came to his own. To, he made himself known to his own. Before the Jews, them refused him. They went on to eternity. Those who received him and believed it, their names and mortal and will be forever. <laughs> That's right. Now, I am not him. I'm just your brother. I am your brother, a servant of Jesus Christ, sent here with my brethren and with you people here to, with a gift that manifests and if I had time could take it through the Bible this week and prove to you by Scripture after Scripture infallible proofs that this is the hour of it. Don't let it go past you. Here's a girl. I've never seen her in my life. Lovely young woman. She might be a Christian. She might not. She might be, she might be sick. She might not. She might have financial troubles, domestic troubles. I've never seen her in my life. But here's a perfect view of what I was talking about. Here's a little panoramic tonight. Here's a man and here's a woman meeting for the first time. She just raised her hand. She didn't know me. And here's my hands. I'd have never seen her in my life. See? And she said, I was a stranger to you. Is that right, lady? Here we are. Now, sirs, we would see Jesus. What would he do if he appeared on the scene? Just like he did the day at the well. It's a Samaritan woman. Is that right? Now, what can he do? Is anoint me and anoint her. If he doesn't do it, I can't say one thing. This is a deaf mute until something speaks in it. So am I. I don't know her. She don't know me. So how, how am I going to know anything about her? Now, what if I'd say, lady, are you sick? She'd say, yes, sir, Mr. Brandon, I'm sick. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Shake her. Say, glory to God. Receive it. Hallelujah. Go on, your heel. That could be all right. Sure. That'd be fine. She believed it. She'd get well. Certainly. Just like what Charlie Fuller said down here one time, Brother Fuller. He said, I believe in these gifts, and I believe in these great gifts of healing, too. But said, they're gifts of healing, but God's going to make that man answer the judgment bar for commercializing it. And I believe so, too. He's right there. Yes, sir. Don't commercialize God. He can't be commercialized. But God will make you pay for what you're doing while you use it. Now, lady, I'm a stranger. Somebody, she's got a prayer card in her hand. Somebody did it. Oh, it's, oh it's, it's not. I see. It's some something else. I thought it was a prayer card. Excuse me. Oh, it's, just, it's for since she's got somebody else's card. All right. Now, if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever... Now, I picture to you the Bible, Pentecostal church, I mean this year. I picture to you the Bible and what Jesus was yesterday. Now, he said that in this last day he would come down in human flesh like he did at the Sodom and would do the same thing. Now, if he will return and do just like he did to the Samaritans and to the Jews, will you believe him to be the Messiah that's here in the building tonight? Raise your hands. If you say, if he'll do the same thing, I'll believe him. Well, this one case should settle it. If you're honest in your heart, it should settle it. Now, here we are both under oath that we know not one another. All right. Now, if God will reveal to me something that you have done, that you know I know nothing about, or something that, uh, that you're planning on doing that I know nothing about, or something about you, what your trouble is, what your sickness is, what your affliction or, or something other. You know, Something like that. Then would you believe that it was him? That was, it'll have to come through some kind of power. If you believe that it's his power, then you get his blessings. If you believe it's another power, well, that's it between you and God. See, I wouldn't know what happened there. Now, if he will do it, you will accept it. If he do it on the same fashion he did in the Bible, like him and that woman standing talking, uh, you would believe it, will you, lady? And the church said they'd believe it. Um, now it's God's time to act. See? Now here we are, probably three or four hundred, three hundred people anyhow sitting in here tonight. All right? Look here. Before three hundred people, and I see before five hundred thousand in Bombay, India. See? Two hundred and seventy-five thousand in Durban, South Africa. It don't fail. It's God. Now if he can tell you what you have been, surely he can, you'd believe, you'll know where that's true or not. When he speaks, you'll know where that's true. Well, if it is, and he tell you what you have been, what about what you will be? You could believe that easy, then, couldn't you, if you'd tell that? All right. 
a young woman that I've never seen in my life. She's a lot younger than I. Born years apart, perhaps miles apart. In our first time meeting. But now I'm just talking to her in order to catch her spirit just like our Lord did the woman at the well. And I perceive now that she is a believer. And you're suffering. You're wanting prayer for some kind of a skin disease you have. If that's right, raise up your hand. Do you believe? Now, I keep every meeting. I feel that somebody said he gets it. Now, you can't hide your thoughts now. He's here. <laughs> you said, I, I did not guess that. Find out. You seem to have a fine contact with the Spirit of God. Now, I don't know what I told you. That wasn't me. That was him. It's on the recorder there. I could run that back and know what it was, but I don't know now. But if you'll just believe me to be his prophet or his servant, that name stumbles people. So if you just believe with all your heart, Yes, sir. It's a disease of the skin. That's what I told you. And here's another thing. You're having headaches. Real bad headaches. And then there's two children I see that you won't pray for. And the oldest one is suffering with a nerve condition. The younger one is suffering with a, something wrong with the hip. It's a tumor in the hip. If God will tell me who you are, would it make you believe now with all your heart? You know I don't know you, but Mrs. Bowman, you can go home. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And in your heart. God bless you, my sister. Do you believe, sirs, we would see Jesus? I just have faith. Now, here's a man. i never seen him in my life. He's perhaps a little older than I am. We're strangers to each other, and I don't know you, and you don't know me. But if God can tell me something, or, now be real quiet. Don't nobody move around. See, your spirits. You see, each one of you is a spirit. You know that? Amen. This is my hand, as I said last night. This is my hand. This is my finger. This is my ear. This is my nose, my eyes. But who is me? See, that's something that belongs to me. I'm the spirit. You're here for somebody else. You're not for yourself. The person that you're here for is very seriously ill. They have death shadow over them. It's a cancer. They're not here. They're in Phoenix, Arizona. Go believe and they'll get well. As thou hast believed, so be it unto you. God bless you. Just have faith. Don't doubt. You believe? What about you sitting there, lady, in the chair? This thrilled you something did right there, didn't it? This lady sitting here with her coat, laying with her hand up, looking at me like that. Yeah, right here on the end. You believe that high blood pressure will leave you and you'll be all right? All right, then just go ahead. You can be made well. <laughs> what did she touch? She's 30 feet away from me. She touched the high priest. That can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. That's him. We are strangers to each other, sir. I don't know you. You don't perhaps don't know me unless it's just by name or sit in a meeting somewhere and see me. It's, uh, but to know each other, we do not know each other. We're strangers to one another. Now, if the Lord Jesus will reveal to me something about you that you know that I do not know, will you believe him as the Messiah? Not me, but him working through me. I just a gift just to submit myself to his spirit, and I'm out of the way, and he does the talking. Well, if he'll tell you, you know where it's truth or not. Oh. You're suffering something wrong with the veins. It's varicose veins. That's exactly right. But I see a woman up here. Somebody you're praying for. It's your sister. She has a mental break. You're praying for her. Thus saith the Lord. That's true. Raise your hand. Believe on the Lord Jesus now. Go receive what you've asked for. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Christ.
How do you do? Excuse me, I wasn't by my, beside myself. I was watching the light. I wasn't sure. I see where it stopped, but I wasn't sure what what taken place. See, I, I just have to follow it. See, I, now, you're ready for an operation. <clears throat> but do you believe that God could heal you of that? You have three growths in three different places. If I will explain them to you, will it help you? One of them's in the throat, one of them's in the female gland, and the other one's under your right arm. Mrs. McIntosh, that's your name. Go home and believe the Lord Jesus Christ and be made well in the name of the Lord Jesus. You believe? Yes. Sirs, we would see Jesus. Well, that's him. It's that feeling. Now, don't that confirm that the Pentecostal church who feels that blessing, that's the Lord Jesus, is he? He's doing the same works. That's not me. I don't know these people. God in heaven knows that. I don't know the people, but God does know them. <clears throat> if thou canst believe, all things are possible. A woman's got her handkerchief up there. That light's still over the woman. Is that the woman who's on the platform just now? Got her handkerchief up. Was you up here? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's right behind you. The lady right behind you, the arthritis, sitting over there on the end. Believe on the light, said sister. Amen. You believe with all your heart? You believe that arthritis will leave you? You do? If you had arthritis, shake your hand like this so the people know. You were sitting there believing that woman come with anointing. Now go home and be well. Jesus Christ heals you. What did she touch? Mm-hmm. I don't know you. We are strangers to each other. If that's right. Would you raise your hands with me? All of the people, if you would just believe what would happen right now. There would be a revival breakout on this West Coast that would sweep around the world. If you could only realize what I'm looking at. I, I hope, surely, I, I found favor in your sight before God. I'm telling you the truth and God's vindicating it to be the truth. What God is desiring to do right here in this church tonight. It's remarkable. <clears throat> but I, I'm weakening, you see. Just look on my hands, see, this perspiration. I just, how many knows that that weakens you? One woman touched his garment and he said virtue went out of him and he was the son of God. Now I'm a sinner saved by grace. Daniel saw one vision, troubled him at his head for many days. See? Just believe. Now this man, we are <clears throat> both say that we're strangers to one another. Do not know each other, but God does know us. Now if he can reveal to me something about you that... Do you know what I don't know? Would it satisfy that you're... Would the rest of you, even a prayer line everywhere, believe with all your heart? Uh, this Bible laying here, and this man and I stand here, we've never met before in life. With our hands up, we've never met before. Now, Jesus said he perceived their thoughts. How many knows that? How many knows that the Bible said the Word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, and it's also a discerner of the thoughts of the heart? The intents and thoughts of the heart and mind. Does the Bible say that? The Word of God. Well, what was the Word of God? Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And here the Word is made manifest in our flesh. Oh, God. Surely you won't miss it. Surely, surely. Believe. Just a gift, sir. Trying to relax myself and catch your spirit. As odd as it might seem, I've seen people laying dead. Finland, three or four different places I've seen in my life. And God would let my spirit so lead me to go out into the land and catch that spirit and bring it right back again. To that person. It's true. God in heaven knows it's true. Now, when it's on you and you're still under free moral agency... You'll have to act. And I couldn't do that unless 
It was a, a commandment of God showing me a vision. Jesus said, I do nothing except the Father shows me. Then you say, can he show you that I am well? or what? He can show me what's your trouble, but you have to accept your faith. I couldn't save you, neither could I heal you. It's already done. But he's sure now to show that he's the same God that wrote the words. See? Now, yep, you're very sick. Fix and go to the hospital. Tomorrow for TB. That's right. You believe me to be his prophet or his servant? You do? You believe you could, you're going to get well and come home now? Go be all right? You believe? If I tell you who you were, would that help you? All right. Walter Kaiser, go on and believe it with all your heart. That's right. Believe with all your heart. Just have faith. Have faith. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Sitting there, sir, with the gray suit on, had trouble with your lungs, too. <clears throat> if you can believe, yeah. yeah. See, I had tr- lung trouble. I noticed that light flash over you as soon as he was healed. With that, what he had there, he had lung trouble, too, of some sort. It went over you. Your faith finished it. Go home, be well. <laughs> your faith makes you. Sitting right back behind this woman. Another one looking right through here at me. Right now, she had lung trouble. It's cancer and in the spine also. Believe with all your heart. A little gray-headed lady. If that's true, raise up on your feet. Raise up on your feet. I'm a perfect stranger to you. Is that right? Wave your hand. That's what was your trouble. All right? I take the authority. Do you believe this to be the truth? Then in the name of Jesus Christ, I condemn that devil. Go and be well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You believe in that heart trouble leaving, you'll be made well and you'll go home? With all your heart, then go and believe with all your heart and be made well. Come. What do you think? You believe that asthma leaving, you go home, quit coughing? Then go believe it with all your heart and be made well. If you're not there. Come, sister. Once you're so nervous, you've been nervous for a long time. All right, you're healed now. Go believe it with all your heart and be made well. Archer, that's what breaks you out. All right, lady, come. You believe with all your heart, your back trouble's healed. Go believe with all your heart and say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Nervous heart. Do you believe it heals it? Go and say, thank you, Lord, and be healed. Just have faith. That's all you have to do. Look here, lady, at me. You believe me to be his prophet? That lady's trouble you're having, female trouble, that's right. Go be healed in Jesus' name. Just a moment. Something went to the audience. Yes, a man sitting right back here suffering with back trouble. Looking right at me. You believe, sir? All right. Receive your healing. Be made well in the name of Jesus Christ. Have faith in God. The woman sitting behind the man there has got diabetes. You believe with all your heart? Raise up the little gray-headed lady with glasses on. You touched something, didn't you? Rise up. Be made well. Go home and believe the Lord Jesus Christ. Have faith. If I wouldn't say a thing to you and just lay hands on you, would you get... You know, you believe that's the Holy Spirit? Come here, let me lay hands on then in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Now, come just show how they can do it. See, you know I know what's wrong with you. But if I don't say nothing, will it be all right? Lay hands on you, you believe? This is anointing of some sort. Believe in your heart, trouble goes. <laughs> she won't be sad so bad. All right, come. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be healed. You go home, be well. Have faith now, don't doubt it. Young lady, a while ago when I was preaching, he was sitting right back there looking at me. You turned around and looked at a woman, a real odd feeling went over you. When he, while I was preaching, saying something about the Lord Jesus, especially the day when I talked about Sodom, had a strange feeling. Remember that? That's when your female trouble was healed. I go home. Maybe. You believe with all your heart? Sirs, we would see Jesus. Is he the same yesterday, today, and forever? Raise your hands. Now, I want to ask you, how many of you believers shake your hands like this? All right? The Bible said this, These signs shall follow them that believe. Do you believe that? Yes. If this what he said, the works that I do, shall you do also? Then lay your hands on one another. Don't pray for yourself. Pray for the person you got your hands on. Yes. Lay your hands on one another. These signs shall follow them that believe. Up in the balcony up there. That man sitting at prostrate trouble, sitting over on the left side. Believe with all your heart, sir. That's it. God heals you, makes you well. Believe. Put your hands on one another and pray for one another now. Our Heavenly Father, we now bring Satan to a showdown. He is a deceiver, and he's been exposed tonight. 
by the power and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Satan, you've lost the battle. Come out of this, people. Leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of them. I command every one of you that believes in Jesus Christ and knows he keeps his word, believes that that's his spirit. You're now. If you believe it with all your heart, a believer has had his hands laying on you, which the Bible said, Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Hallelujah. He's the same God that you're making himself to know and that he is your Pentecostal Messiah. Every one of you that will accept him now as your healer, no matter where you are, stand up on your feet and accept him as your healer. I pronounce it healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Raise your hands to him now and praise him. Amen. I will praise him. I will praise him. Just praise him. I will praise him. Praise the land for sinners' name again. 